Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at using our combinatorics to go ahead and calculate probability. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example and you'll see how combinatorics will be able to make certain types of probability questions very simple to calculate. So here's the example that we can use. It says five students, three are 10th graders and two are 9th graders. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and just showed this a little bit more visually and said that we have five students, three are 10th graders, two are 9th graders. And notice that in those five students, we either got 10th or 9th graders and basically all those students are accounted for. Now let's say for example, a team is composed of three players. If we wanted to go ahead and calculate the probability that the team is composed of three 10th graders, what I could do is of course using non-combinatoric methods is I could go ahead and create our tree diagram. So here we got our first selection, our second selection, and our third selection. And we got the associated probabilities based upon what happens in the previous selection. So if I wanted to go ahead and calculate the probability of getting three 10th graders, then of course I could just go this, this, and that, multiply those together, and I would come up with the total, I would come up with the probability of choosing three 10th graders. Okay, now what happens though is that once we go ahead and look at the same problem using combinatorics, we can go ahead and make this, right here, this tree diagram, unnecessary. So let's go ahead and see how that works out. What happens then is if I take a look at the probability of three 10th graders, choosing three 10th graders for this particular team, what that means then is that when I take a look at this, overall, I have to choose three players from five students. So then in other words, the total amount of ways that I can actually go ahead and choose three students from five players is this right here. That's the total number of ways. Now if I go ahead and take a look at choosing three, play three tenth graders, what that means then is that I'm actually taking three students from here and I'm choosing no students from here. And that's the reason why if I go ahead and take 3, choose 3, and then times it by 2, choose 0, I will be able to come out with the probability of choosing 3 10th graders to make up this team without having to rely on the tree diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one more case. Say for example I wanted to do 2 10th graders and 1 9th grader. Now if we go ahead and take a look at the combinatoric method, Notice that I'm still having, out of five students, I'm choosing three, and that's the total number of possibilities of choosing a team. And then what I'm doing then is I'm saying, out of the three 10th graders, I need to choose two of them. And then, out of the, out of the uh, two 9th graders, I need to choose one of them. If I multiply those two together, then I can come up with the total number of combinations of coming out with two, nine, two tenth graders and one ninth grader divided by the total number of ways of combining all of, uh, com coming out with a team of three players I come out with the probability of choosing two tenth graders and one ninth grader for this team of three players now of course if we forgot how to do this then we could go back to here and you can go ahead and take a look at the tree and then we would just have to go through all the different routes where there would actually be two 10th graders and one 9th grader, two 10th graders and one 9th grader, etc., etc. So notice, this is a little bit more, I mean, it's, it's thorough and it's going to come up with the same results, but the tree is a little bit more complicated and more time consuming. So let's just take a look at one last example. One 10th grader and two 9th graders, what is the probability of choosing a team of three composed of that? Well, it's 3 choose 1 times 2 choose 2, divided by 5 choose 3. Use your calculator and you're done. Okay, so what's one other advantage of being able to use our combinatorics to, uh, to, in order to calculate probability is imagine what would happen, imagine what would happen if we went ahead and changed this and said that there are 10 students. Okay, and let's just say, for example, that there were 6 here, 4 here, so in other words, we change this to a 10, we change this to a 6, we change this to a 4, and let's say that the team is composed of 7 players. 
oh my goodness, can you imagine this tree? This tree is going to actually have to have seven different possible selections. And because of that, you're going to come up with something that is a lot more difficult to calculate using the tree method. Now, if we went through this here, and let's just go ahead and change the problem again just very slightly. Uh, let's change this one here. Let's say, for example, we wanted to go ahead and find the probability of a team composed of seven players such that four of them were 10th graders and two of them were 9th graders. Then all I would have to do is say, okay, well, the total number of players that I'm choosing from the 10th grade, well, there's six 10th graders, and from that, I'm choosing four of them. From the four 9th graders, I'm choosing two of them. And out of all the students, which are 10, I'm choosing seven. Okay. So, oh, wait, 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 wait. This, this doesn't make seven. Let's say that this is three. Sorry. So let's choose three. Okay. And there you go. That's how we would go ahead and calculate the probability of choosing four 10th graders and three 9th graders out of 10 students all together to make a team of seven. Okay, so let's put all of this together then. Notice that if we go ahead and use our ideas of combinatorics with either the permutations or the combinations, then we can very easily go about calculating certain probabilities where we have, say for example, a number of students, and then we can subdivide those two into two partitions that would cover the entire sample space. And then we just choose accordingly, okay? And then we don't have to worry about using the tree diagram. We can go just straight to the combinatorics method. Okay, so we'll take a look at some of those examples when we come back to class, and we'll see how you do. See you later, bye.